Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them out of bite-sized pieces. So today we've got some pretty good stuff and it's mostly about Cardano and Ethereum. First up, Gucci and Playboy want in on Ethereum NFT frenzy and this is one of the primary reasons why Ethereum is just crushing it right now. So we'll take a look at that and then the big eternal question is why is anybody building on Cardano? Well, here we go. Cardano could soon see an on-chain liquidity boost, and we're going to take a look at Occam's Razor, a new type of protocol, and what is going on behind that, and we'll go over both of those things, but first take a look at what's going on into the market. So today it is uh, April 8th, it is 10 a.m. Uh, El Paso, Texas time, and uh, hey, congratulations, uh, our market cap is teetering around the $2 trillion mark. Now, there was a $100 billion loss, of course, we just made up uh, that ground uh, very quickly, and just like we talked about yesterday, Yesterday. doesn't matter what's going on in the market just understand that uh, this is normal so pullbacks are normal uh, these dips are normal and uh, if you don't like the price just stick around for a couple days and it'll change and uh, that's what we have right now on top of that um, we're taking a look at the hottest on Twitter this is uh, trade the chain sentiment analysis the links in the description you can check that out and what I notice right here is that uh, there's a lot of things going on as far as like uh, sentiment and what is being uh, talked about one inch engine KCS OMG swap Wi-Fi and the big thing is like, why are these things being talked about? And the reason is, uh, real quick, is because there's a new listing over on uh, Coinbase Pro, which is one inch, Engine Coin, NKN, Origin Token, and they're all gonna be listed on uh, Coinbase Pro, which means there's that Coinbase effect, debatable, and, and that's also gonna go over to Coinbase. So if you're wondering why there's a big uh, jump in these uh, prices, that's the reason, and that is what's going on. Now we take a look at the coins themselves, uh, as far as like what is going on with uh, the price action, Bitcoin's at 58,000, uh, Ethereum is holding above 2,000, Binance Coin's at 418. And I wish I had Binance, Binance Coin. It's just amazing how much it's gone up 27%, 70% for XRP. Congratulations to all the XRP holders. I know I, uh, I have to say that because if not, it's like one show with XRP, one show with XRP. Well, there you go. Congratulations. Watch out. Polkadot, 8%, 10% for Litecoin, and then, of course, the ones we just talked about. So that's what's going on in the market. It's a great day. Everybody's happy. Prices are up. Um, it's not going to last. What goes up what will go down, and uh, there's going to be dips. But uh, enjoy the day. Take the W because uh, you earned it. All right. So let's take a look at what is going on as far as today's top stories. So this is the big question to me and for a lot of you out there. Which one is it? Is it Ethereum? Is it Cardano? Which one's going to be the winner? Me personally, I don't think there is going to be a specific winner and it's only going to be one chain and that is it and that is all. Um, I think there's room enough for both, especially in the next couple of years. I'm not in 10 years, 20 years, debatable, right? But uh, right now, Ethereum crushes it. Uh, you can't really do too much on Cardano. Smart contracts are here. There's a lot of problems on there. No one's really building on it right now. So Ethereum is just gobbling up everything. And here's a, a example of that. Gucci and Playboy want in on Ethereum NFT frenzy. I thought this was interesting because NFT is just another use case for Ethereum. And uh, this is why everybody's building on Ethereum. Matter of fact, uh, I had a friend who um, wanted to build out his token, his coin, and he took a lot, look at all the different uh, projects out there. He actually reached out to a lot of them. They're like, we can't do that. We can't do that. Ethereum, we can do that. And here we are. So this is what it says. Uh, this was a uh, release from Playboy. I think we all know who they are. We're ex and it states, we're excited to announce a new partnership with Nifty Gateway, the premium platform for NFT art, tweeted Playboy this morning. Our entry into NFT art builds on Playboy's long history of providing a platform for artists and creative self-expression. Great, now we're gonna have NFTs as far as Playboy. And they did not miss the boat. Good for them. They realize what's uh, actually happening. And then Gucci comes along. And first of all, me personally, if I'm thinking about NFTs, I'm thinking about three things, uh, pictures, videos, and MP3s. So for Playboy, that makes total sense. But for Gucci and like the handbag, uh, I don't understand why they would get into it. And uh, it was revealed to me in this article. So uh, it states here that uh, Gucci, and this is their actual tweet, it says, uh, ever since the 96 million Beeple sale that brought headlines everywhere, we've seen a lot of saturation in the market. I believe we've hit the stage of mainstream exposure. Uh, more NFTs, more collectible projects, more corporations like Gucci and Playboy entering. Sorry, so this was from uh, Loopify. And then top artists like uh, Mur 
Murakami and Damien Hirst creating NFTs. Now these corporations, uh, big artists and celebrities. And we see it uh, in line with uh, Tom Brady's going to come out uh, doing an NFT. We had Gronk, uh, Gronkowski. He minted his own N NFTs for football cards. And all the different uh, artists and celebrities, of course, they're getting on the bandwagon. So again, Gucci, I don't get it. But Marjorie Hernandez, founder of Luxo, a blockchain platform that works with fashion brands, explained... Luxury brands were behind the e-commerce trend, and that's true. You didn't see too many people or too many groups getting and jumping in on Amazon going, hey, we can't wait to sell Gucci on here. Hey, we can't wait to sell Levi's. Hey, we can't wait to sell, uh, name the uh, great brand. They just kind of let it pass, and all of a sudden, just they're like, what happened to our sales? Uh, they're behind the trend, so there's now more of a willingness to experiment with new technologies like blockchain. She added, the question is just who pulls the trigger first? And if you really think about it, uh, Gucci, uh, there's a, they're a global brand. So they have a lot of great uh, artists and creative types who work with them to create these, these great uh, handbags. Not a big, you know, I'm not, I don't really care about handbags, whatever. So if they have something like that and they can just put it out there as an NFT, that's more revenue for them. That's more marketplace. That's for marketing. So why wouldn't they do it? And that just makes sense to me. So let's see uh, how much NFTs are actually going to explode this year. I think it's going to be big. And those things are being built on Ethereum. So here again is the question. With Ethereum being the number one really... Uh, you know, marketplace for NFTs and smart contracts and everything else. As far as market cap, I'm not going to say about, you know, the fees and the time frame. What happens um, with new technology? Well, if you take a look at new technology, I'm going to show you two things. So Ethereum maximalists, don't freak out. Cardano maximalists, don't freak out. You'll both have your fair share of time. I'm going to show you, there's a great little video from Data is Beautiful. And just real quick, it just talks about if you're talking about technology, take a look at browsers from the early days. Now, again, we can't, this is not apples to apples. Ethereum is not a browser. Get that. Smart contracts, you can build a lot of things on it. NFTs, great, 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 great. But just talking about technology in general, right? Because I believe we're in the early days of cryptocurrency digital assets. So remember Netscape Navigator? Some of you do, some of you don't. Some of you are very young, and some of you are very old like me. And we remember Netscape Navigator. And this was the dominance in 97. Then all of a sudden, Internet Explorer came out. Why? Well, it was because Microsoft pretty much owned all everything. And all the computers were PCs. So they bundled it with Internet Explorer. And it went up pretty high. So you'd think that Microsoft would dominate forever because everybody uses a PC, right? Well, Mac came out and they kind of solved that. But I mean, I use a Mac, but still, the majority still use a PC. Then Firefox somehow ate into uh, their bottom line. Then all of a sudden, Google came out of nowhere and just said, you know, we got a better, a better device. It's called Google Chrome. And before you know it, even though you had a PC, and an Explorer kind of sucked, and it kind of went, went to the wayside. Eh, that it sucked. I, I didn't mind it so much. And then, you know, Chrome became that big dominant factor, and so on and so forth. I personally use Brave, but whatever, but as far as dominating factor. So that's technology in that way. So if you look at Ethereum, you can say, well, Ethereum could be the Netscape Navigator. Again, don't freak out. I'm going to give you both of your options here. So if we take a look at technology, let's take a look at e-commerce, for example, okay? So here's another one. This is also from Data is Beautiful. If we take a look at, these are the number of visitors per year on a website. Again, not apples to apple, but going into 1998, and let's just move forward. There's a little website that's going to pop up uh, pretty soon. It's called Amazon. And you see that Amazon is dominating everybody. I mean, for the most part. I mean, not Excite and Lycos and Yahoo, which seems ridiculous to me <laughs> nowadays. Look at AOL. used to dominate everything, right? Uh, but uh, that went to the wayside. So e-commerce, Amazon was the pretty big thing, right? And you would expect, since it was the first one, it would maintain and never fall off. Well, here's the thing with Amazon. At some point, uh, Amazon's here. You're going to notice another company going to pop up. It's called eBay. And eBay comes in, another e-commerce site. You could go there and bid on things. And it just started to kick the tar off of, out of Amazon. What happened? Well, Amazon, they wanted to acquire a lot of different companies. They had a little bit of growing pains. And then before you know it, uh, they lost a lot of market share, a lot of visitors per year, went over to eBay to buy all their things. And that just happened. But here's the most important part. As time went on, they figured it all out. They had a Jeff Bezos had a really good focus 
on customer acquisition and customer appreciation. And he was relentless. And I think it was actually Simon Yu over at Stormex, Stormex who talked about this. He goes, Jeff Bezos had such a direct line of thought. He's like, if we just make sure that the customer is taken care of and we make them super happy, we will be a dominating force in e-commerce and everybody will go to us. And he was laughed at. And of course, eBay was like, we'll be okay. And then before you know it, time moves forward. Here we have Amazon. I mean, let's say I mean, I'm fast forward here. Amazon, of course, eBay goes away and Amazon becomes a more dominant force. 2008, 2009, 2010, 2021. So it's not like once you have this dominating force or factor that you're going to stay at the top forever. Again, you could actually fall down and then you could start to go, you know what? What did we not do? We didn't do that thing to make sure that we are correct. So I see a lot of parallels between Ethereum, their transactions, their gas fees, the time frame, and everything else to where they could actually bring it around. However, you never know because Cardano could be right behind them. Avalanche is right behind them. All these different types of smart contracts, Tezos is right behind them and going, hey, we're in the top 30 and we're competing. Will that happen? I have no idea. But again, I don't know which one's going to be great and which one's going to be awesome. That's why I hedge my bet and I own both. And uh, I haven't sold any of my positions uh, so far. Actually, that's not true. Uh, once I hit 2000, I sold a bit of Ethereum because I was on my exit strategy and I try to do what I say I'm going to do. So that is it for that piece. Let me know what you think in the comment section and let's give equal opportunity to a little bit of Cardano. So this was a, a new article that I uh, just uh, read. I thought it was pretty interesting because the big knock on Cardano was, look, you guys are super slow. It's taking a long time to get things done. Nobody's building on it. What the heck's going on? Wait for a second. You have to understand. Gogan era just came about as far as smart contracts. The Mary Hard Fork just came about. So you can't compare a Cardano to Ethereum so much because Ethereum is way far ahead. Let's just be honest. You cannot build too much on Cardano. And I think that might change. So this was a nice little piece about Occam's Razor. So massive expansion of the Cardano ecosystem could see a massive expansion of its on-chain liquidity with the launch of Occam Razor, a decentralized funding platform and liquidity solution specifically built to suit the needs of the network. The network, talking about Cardano, has been notorious for its slow development and bootstrapping process. I've been a critical, I've been critical on it as well. Uh, that's just how it is. I like to uh, make things move a little bit faster. But when you're trying to do you know, things globally, maybe it's uh, not a bad idea to kind of slow down, learn from other mistakes, fix those mistakes, and then move on. With the network now fully decentralized, uh, that is 100% of the stake pool operators are now minting blocks. Um, it's uh, doing pretty well as far as Cardano and decentralization. The time has come for projects to launch on Cardano and utilize, utilize the functionalities that took years to develop. Again, this is the year for Cardano to really start to see things. If nobody builds on Cardano this year, I'm going to pull a Mike Novogratz and hang up my spurs because there's no reason why they shouldn't. And uh, time will tell. Occam Finance, this is from Occam's Razor, has set its sights on making Cardano the go-to network for fundraising. The first division's components will be Occam's Razor, DeFi funding platform, blah, blah, blah. According to the company's blog post, Occam's Razor is fully production ready and will host the first project raising funds soon. To support the Occam ecosystem, the company will launch the OCC token utilizing Cardano's native assets functionality. So very interesting stuff as far as what is going on. So I don't know a lot about Occam's Razor. I don't know exactly, you know, it's great to have liquidity and things like that. I need somebody smarter than me, which is not hard, by the way, to explain what the heck is going on. So I'm going to bring in uh, Mark Berger. Uh, he is the president of Occam's Razor. And I'm just going to ask him the questions. What's going on? How does this work all into Cardano? And are people going to actually build on this thing so we can actually hit the next level? So let's jump right in to this interview. So like we just talked about with that, with that article, Interesting stuff going on with Cardano. A lot of the things I actually need help on to really clarify what was uh, being said there. So uh, I reached out to a couple of friends and they introduced me to uh, Mark Berger. He is the uh, president of Occam's Association, a nonprofit, which is going to work to help to raise Cardano and all the things we just talked about in that article. So Mark, thanks for coming on. Talk to us and simplify it like we're five. 
tell us what is going on and then, uh, you know, just clarify some things. So first off, what is uh, Occam's Razor? Well, thank you for having me. So mm -hmm. Occam's Razor is a launchpad for Cardano. It will enable Cardano developers to get the desired funds to start building on Cardano. Sounds good. I can see that. So then we need that foundation. We need that liquidity, right? That's what is going to build on it. I believe that this is kind of like the year for everything to happen. Smart contracts are coming down the pipe. Golden Era is here. We had the Merry Hard Fork. So is that the big thing that Occam's, that your foundation or that your association is going to be doing? Or is there more pieces of the puzzle? Because if it's, if it's just liquidity, I mean, that's great. We, we all need liquidity to bring over these developers. Anything else going on? Yeah, so we are building this, first of all, in, in Ethereum. We're having a beta test right now and we'll be releasing in April. Mm -hmm. We're building this on Ethereum to um, capture liquidity from a other chain to enable ah. Cardano developers. And then in August, we'll be ready um, to port it over um, to Cardano and then we'll live on both blockchains. Okay. So we got four months here. We're going to build it on Ethereum. You're going to build everything on Ethereum and then bring it all over for native assets so that people, not everybody, but the people that who are building over there can make it very easy to come on over to Cardano and of course, the liquidity that follows. Okay. So that is that part. Is that correct? That is correct. On top of that, we have partnerships with uh, centralized uh, exchanges that are going to enable a centralized bridge, a Ethereum to Cardano or vice versa bridge. So the first use case is going to be that um, our OCC token can be deposited to those uh, exchanges, either as an ERC-20 or as a uh, Cardano uh, asset. And on that exchange, you can um, switch the chain um, and then withdraw it into um, that chain where you need it. This is, of course, of course only the, the first use case. Over time, you'll be able to withdraw a Bitcoin and uh, hunt for some interesting yield um, on the uh, Oaken platform as well. Okay. Well, I like that. Everybody likes yield. We'll take it. So now that we have all these things going on, um, I did a little bit more research. I took a look at it in, in the background. Is there any plans for a DEX, decentralized exchange, something like that? Because if you're going to build on, on Ethereum, Ethereum is great and it's going to do well, but there is a one big problem. I think we all know that problem. It is the gas fees. So, and of course, time constraints. So anything like that's going to happen down the pipe? Yes, exactly. So after the release of uh, Oakham Razor, um, we'll have a release of Oakham X, which um, is a, okay. let's say, Uniswap version for DEX that has many, many uh, improvements. Those improvements, they mainly come from uh, my or my team's past, where we have been working on centralized uh, digital asset exchanges and where we exactly know how uh, such an exchange works and, and, and what the mechanics are in there. And we sort of analyzed what is out there in DEXs today and um, are going to fix many of these uh, problems. The same thing here. First, it's going to be live on Ethereum. Um, right now, we're um, testing uh, on, on uh, testnet. And okay. we're confident that we can release the first version in, let's say, two, three months from now. Um, and then the same thing as well. We're going to port this over using Plutus in the Plutus. summer this year to make it happen on Cardano and benefit from, from all the things uh, that have been happening on Cardano um, that, that we can utilize there. Gotcha. Well, that sounds pretty good. I'll take that DEX. I'll take that DEX because I don't want to pay outrageous fees. So we'll see how that works out. And you know, I, I really should have started with because uh, Danish introduced us, uh, Danish Chowdhury over there at uh, Bitcoin.com. That's a little fancy exchange that, that, uh, that's going on. And he said, you know, hey, this is, this is Mark. You got to talk to this guy and he knows what's going on. But tell us real quick, I'm a big believer in investing in people. A lot of the people that are on my, on my channel, my subscribers kind of are in the same type of vein and theory as me. So Mark, tell us like, first of all, how'd you get into this? 
is this like something that is new or have you been doing this for quite some time? Because I took a look at some, some history, looks like there's been a lot of history. So just tell us, just ease our, ease our fears and tell us where, where you came from. Yeah, so I have around 20 years of experience sure. um, running um, startups in, in the tech uh, environment. And I had a, a short uh, three-year engagement with a bank where I had to build a, yeah, custody from scratch, a trading desk for digital assets from scratch. All those things back then didn't really exist, so I had to build them. <laughs> this um, is true. But yeah. uh, a, a bank remains a bank, so I had to get some freedom uh, and, and get out of there and uh, build stuff. I believe by building stuff, you, you have more impact anyway. This is true. So I'm going to guess this was not an <laughs> this was not an American bank because this was this was <laughs> because and and first of all, what what year was this? I don't think this was last year. Yeah. So so the the engagement with the bank started in late uh, 2015. Okay. Um, so it was a yeah. bit before uh, the the 2017 craze, yeah. uh, which <laughs> went really well for the bank. Um, and then after the 2017 craze, um, I, I left to to go build again. It was not an American bank; it was a Swiss bank called uh, Von Tobel. Um, it's the the Shocker. yeah the biggest bank for um, structured products in in Europe. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so so I'm Swiss myself, so it's only natural um, that I had to end up um, in, in a Swiss environment somewhere. Totally makes sense. And then, but this was 2015. But even before then, you were in blockchain and cryptocurrency and digital assets, right? Yes, yes, yes. I had my uh, my phase where I was interested uh, in in Bitcoin and where I um, started making yeah. sense. Uh, of what this is and, and how this works and if it will eventually impact uh, the, the the world uh, mm -hmm. with what it is and what it does. Gotcha. So, okay. So we go from there all the way up to, to the present. Now we're talking about Aquas Razor. We're talking about uh, the whole uh, liquidity process. We're talking about a DEX. And then what about like for, for self-governance and DAOs and things like that? Yeah, that's our, our third product. So mm -hmm. The OCC token um, basically um, has this function um, that it can be used in, in the, the Oakum, Oakum DAO. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to achieve is that we have a, a wide distribution um, of the OCC token so that over time we can uh, decentralize the, the Oakum protocol and get it in the hands of the users so that they can uh, yeah, write proposals, that they can get them voted, uh, et cetera. Gotcha. Okay. So we got three. Okay. So I'm talking about these things and you're, and you're telling me about, okay, we got this product, this product, this product. Any other, any other uh, projects that you have in that little, little arsenal that you've been talking about? Or is there anything else I missed? Yeah, I think th those three products are the main ones. So okay. Oakum Razor, Launchpad, Oakum X, um, Advanced uh, Dex, and then the Oakum DAO represented by, by the OCC token. Um, there, there is a few like side things, for instance, a uh, centralized uh, bridge where you can uh, swap tokens from uh, Ethereum to Cardano um, and, and the other way around, um, which should give uh, exchanges, centralized exchanges freedom uh, in, in the future so that uh, when people want to withdraw tokens, um, and don't want to spend too much gas and want to put it on a blockchain where there's interesting yield um, to, to capture, then they can do that using, using that bridge. Gotcha. And I think that all comes down to when you were working, I think you were working with exchanges in the past, and this is where it all comes from. That is true. That is true. So my old company, um, Scalable Solutions, okay. is running many um, exchanges throughout the world. So it has a global reach. It's about 22 exchanges and uh, um, about the same amount uh, of, of wallets. And overall, um, the technology is, is processing roughly 10% of, of the global spot volume uh, on a daily basis. Gotcha. That's one of the things I remember Danish actually telling me uh, in between drinks. So yeah, that makes sense. All right. So then, so first of all, Mark, we all appreciate you coming on here to help us make sense of what's going on. It sounds like a pretty good project. Let's, there's last bonus question I'll just ask you is this. Cardano gets a lot of flack because let's be honest, it is not the fastest in development. They take it very slow, very nice. And in the beginning, because I'm an entrepreneur, you're an entrepreneur. 
We like to you know get things done and throw things at the wall, but sometimes it's not a good idea to do that. Uh, a prime example will be like Boeing or airlines. I don't want them to figure out all the mechanical problems when they're up in the air. When I'm in that jet, make sure you fix it before I get up there. So when we're talking about these things, where do you see Cardano going in? Let's just take it simple. Six months, a year, and then try to go till out, out to three years. Where do you see everything happening with Cardano? Well, we're closer than ever um, for things to, to happen for real with Cardano. So basically, all we have to do is wait um, until um, the, the smart contracts are, are fully functioning, mm -hmm. which uh, should be happening uh, later this, this summer. Yeah. Um, and once that happens, it will be a fantastic ecosystem um, that can prosper uh, in too many, many ways. So you, you mentioned that, uh, yeah, a plane should be in order before you board and, and take off. Yes. And this has been happening to Cardano uh, behind the scenes over many years. So there has been a lot of thought uh, put into it. It's already today um, the most decentralized uh, proof of stake uh, blockchain, um, which has, at least for me, decentralization um, has a, a core value. Um, it's going to be super important uh, going forward. Then speed is 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 another thing. Security um, is is the most important uh, factor. And then there is a lot of things they have been putting thought into um, to be ready for also institutional adoption, um, which is going to be the, the game changer um, over the next year when the real money um, is going to be on the blockchain. Yeah, we'll see how this all unfolds. I think this is, this, like I've always said, uh, and everybody out there watching, I think 2021 is the year for them to really take just launch or launch pad off. So, We'll see how it all goes. I personally own a lot of different cryptocurrencies. I do not own any, any tokens with Oculus Razor or anything like that. But uh, Cardano, I'm the state, one of the stake pool operators. So I have a financial interest. Also, I have a financial interest in Ethereum. I don't know which one's going to be great and which one's going to be awesome. I have no idea, but it's looking pretty good for this year. Mark, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Any last words before we take off? Well, thanks a lot uh, for having me. Um, and uh, go and check it our Twitter or Telegram. Um, there will be frequent news coming out that should get many people excited. Sounds good. I'll put it in the description. All right, let's jump back. Fade the All right, so that's it. So thanks again, Mark Berger. I appreciate it for you uh, coming on. I'll link everything in the description below. And uh, that is it for today. So first of all, thanks for sticking with me all the way in. If you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up if you found it had value. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive, like the stories in the beginning. And uh, that is it for today. So thanks so much for uh, being here. I'll see you in the next one.